than the sense of operational value of it. Yeah, I think we are far away in the sense we are, uh, it's a concept which is uh, something which needs to get, people need to get used to. Let's be uh, realistic, the uh, wealth in terms of families uh, really has happened in the last one decade, if not one and a half decade. So we are pretty new uh, to this whole, whole concept and significant size and growth and scale we have really seen only in the last, uh, probably in the last 10-15 years. So uh, there hasn't been that much generational change because the, the families who see, have seen the growth are still very much there at the top. So I think uh, that's something which will, will come in as we go along. The US, uh, they've been at it for I think now close to 60 or 70 years uh, and it's pretty well institutionalized and I think it will happen in India. I don't see any problem for families to uh, accept this and, and embrace it and move on. Interesting that you say that because day before when uh, your father Shashwaya and uh, Mr. J.P. God were there, they talked about the concept of trustees of capital, of how entrepreneurs themselves have to believe that they have to give it back to the society as well. Uh, Bill Gates is a first generation entrepreneur, he is giving a lot back, obviously he has created a lot of wealth as well. Why do you think giving back or even sharing with professionals, employees is a concept which is not pretty much there in family run businesses whereas IT has formed a good benchmark of sharing wealth or giving it back to the society as well. I think there is a big difference, uh, you know, if you look at most of the IT companies or the companies which have been built in the last uh, decade, they have done extremely well. But uh, the, the spirit of partnership, the spirit of sharing started with the inception of the company. Uh, most of the companies were started by a group of young entrepreneurs who are partners, not necessarily in the same family. They got together, they built a business, they came in with, you know, whatever shareholding, 10-15% each. And then from then, that was the foundation on the basis of which the, the uh, business was uh, developed. And so the concept of, you know, uh, sharing outside the family, concept of being together, partnership, uh, was there uh, right from the beginning. When we talk of a family which has been there for three decades, four decades, uh, it's, it's a lot more inclusive. The ownership uh, is a lot more inclusive uh, within the family. Uh, and I think, uh, again, this is something which uh, handling, managing well and then sharing it with, um, uh, with society, with everybody, is something which is, as I said, as a concept, uh, we are now becoming more and more aware of it. Uh, again, as I said, the decision, we, it's pretty early days. Uh, people have really seen this only in the last decade. And, uh, you know, it's something which, which is the, if you take progression, this is the next step uh, which will happen as we go along. And that is sharing with, uh, with society, uh, you know, uh, identifying causes which are necessary for the country's development or which are close to the, uh, to the, to the individual's heart and, uh, you know, participating in that. Okay, before I wrap it up, just to, as a closing comment as well, there's always a question that, oh, you did so much better and you will keep on saying family did so much better. Let's look at it from a generational point of view. What do you think that the previous generation in the family business managed to do better, which the next generation uh, struggles a bit on? I think the biggest, uh, biggest uh, problem or thing which worries the second generation is the level of uh, commitment, the level of hard work, and the level of uh, or level of pain which uh, the you know the entrepreneurs like my father and my uncle, but generally it's the case with most families have gone through to put together the business. Uh, we we think it's normal, we think it's easy, but if you try and follow, I mean, it's, I find it very difficult to keep up uh, with with Papa even now. I mean, if we go to the site together by 6:37, I'm ready to go home. He is ready to carry on. So I think it's important that we, you know, they, they, the level of uh, passion which they have for the business, to build the business, to create the business, uh, is 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 quite high. And many times, uh, the main passion and only passion is business. And people need to understand that, you know, that's the way they've grown up, that's the way they've brought up, and uh, you know, it's going to be difficult because we have other interests. And uh, we are not necessarily willing to put in the same time of hours and, and days required. So I think that's one basic cultural uh, difference. Other than that, uh, I think uh, most of the other things uh, one can, uh, one can uh, live with. So then uh, on the other extreme, the new ways of doing business, do you sometimes find that the family within has contradictions of 
not accepting the new ways of doing business and it's upon you to impress them? No, I think again that comes down to being able to communicate and agree on a, on a broad vision. I really believe that if we, if we, if there's sufficient amount of discussion and, and uh, communication, then and, and the willingness to accept uh, new realities, then I think transition uh, can be done. And uh, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's doable. As I said, it requires a little bit more time, a little bit more effort. Uh, it's like a, you know, it's like trying to keep a marriage alive. I mean, you got to work at it. It's not going to happen if uh, if you you know if you're uh, going your own ways. So I think it's the same. You have to put in the same effort to keep the family alive and 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 evolve as you go along. All right, it's a tough task, but. As we uh, look at inviting questions from the audience, I would like to invite uh, Prashant Choksi as well, who is a third generation entrepreneur who is amongst the crowd and who we thought could question the second generation uh, guy. He's from the chemicals business. But as you guys dwell on your thoughts, uh, there is a legal saying that, uh, just come in, uh, the first generation creates, the second generation enjoys, and the third generation destroys. Uh, I would like to dwell upon those thoughts, Kandarasi uh, Prashant. And maybe some of the questions could um, uh, focus on those. We will open it up to the audience as well as some of the SMS questions uh, which is being moderated right now. Prashant, in your experience, you're the third generation guy, right? So your family, one part of your family sold off a big chunk of business. You have to pretty much, uh, by the way, I have two Prashants and that is just a coincidence. It is not a planned thing. Um, listening to Prashant, how much of it you see playing out right in front of your eyes right now? First of all, let me tell you that uh, Prashant has answered every question so well and in fact I think I got to learn a lot more sitting over there. Um, but I think whatever he has said about is I think absolutely true in terms of uh, as a family, the, the first generation entrepreneur who was my grandfather I suppose, uh, who started the business, the kind of pains he went through and, uh, and the, the second generation when it comes along, how they perceive the business and as a third generation how the he has drawn the picture very clearly, so there's no, um, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, he's done a great job on that one. But uh, I think the key is that I think what he pointed out at several points was communication and I think uh, the kind of passion that the first generation entrepreneurs have which actually sets them apart. Uh, I think they look beyond the smaller nitty gritties of things and, look and are much more passionate about what they are doing and so they are able to succeed. I think the third generation or second generation, I feel they may get stuck into uh, some of these communication or um, if they are not matured enough and can cause a lot of problems for the family and the first generation entrepreneurs themselves. Alright, uh, in some ways do you find the business environment much easier for you to do business in compared to what you saw your grandfather because there were 25 different laws, there was a FEMA, there was this, there was that. Now at least there is, the environment is much more, uh, acts like a facilitator rather than an obstruction. Do you see that as an advantage? Yes, absolutely. I think uh, one of the things which I feel is at that point in time, I think, or even today, if you go to look at the mortality rate of any startup business is very high. Um, so as you, and that time I think in the license raj and the other things which were, uh, capital was not easy, the banks were not willing to give out loans that easily, the angel funding or VC funding was not available. I think it was much harder for them at that point. Today, I think you have these uh, fine gatherings and VCs you can intermingle and I think they are willing to write a check although you may not have a collateral. Um, still, so it is much easier right now, you're right. Prashant, in, in a way, uh, easy access to funding or easy business environment, easier if I must say. Uh, does that kind of take your eyes off the ball sometimes? No, I, sorry, just want to add something. Um, not only. Uh